Our roster preview series rolls on for the 2023-24 season. Up today, the newest member of the Tar Heels, a man from across the pond, Mr. James Aconquo. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and joining me as he does every single stinking week is our guy, Coach Pat Kilby, sitting right over there if you're watching us on YouTube. We want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listener watch every single day. It's great to be together. Uh, Pack as we're recording this, starts school tomorrow, so throw up a little uh, prayer for him. And I, I say that only half-jokingly uh, as he starts the year and getting to invest in the lives of so many young men and women as they start a new school year. So, uh, Pack, best to you, brother, in the upcoming school year, and, and can't wait to track with your team as basketball season gets going later on this fall. Folks, this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, yes, right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Check it out at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. All right, Pat Kilby, we are rolling right along with our roster preview series. We've worked through the freshmen, Elliot Cadeau and Zayden High. We've worked through the sophomores, Seth Trimble and Jalen Washington. Last week, we moved to the juniors, Mr. Harrison Ingram coming to us from Stanford. And now we wrap that up with the other junior. Remember all these couplets, all these pairs, Mr. James Aconquo coming to the Tar Heels via the transfer portal and West Virginia because of the downfall, unfortunately, of legendary coach Bob Huggins. So, Pac, as we always do, would you hit us with the bio info and the stats on Mr. James Aconquo? You bet. Yeah, so we got James Aconquo. Uh, he'll be a junior this season for the Tar Heels. Um, he's a forward position, a little bit flexible in that. You know, it could be the five, could be the four. Um, hometown of Maidenhead, England. James is listed at 6'8", weight 240. Um, he's going to be wearing number 32 for the Tar Heels, which is also what he wore um, in his time at West Virginia. You can follow him on social media. His Twitter handle is at KingJMO <laughs> underscore 32. And Instagram handle is the same, KingJMO underscore Thank you. 32. Thank you, James, for keeping it the same, right? <laughs> Doing work for us here. Keep it simple. I like it. <laughs> So just to run you through some of his stats from uh, the previous season, he played in 31 games of West Virginia's 34, um, 10.9 minutes per game with a season high of 22, two and a half points per game, three rebounds per game. Uh, he finished with a double-double against Oklahoma last year, um, five total assists on the season, 13 total turnovers, 22 total blocks, and two steals. Um, 27 of 47 from the field, which was good for 57.4%. 0 of 6 from 3, really no shocker there. Um, <laughs> free throws, 23 for 38, which was good for 60.5%. So there's obviously some things in there that we would like to see improve, and there's some things in there that if he can do that, that's going to help us a lot. I really like the fact that he was 57.4% uh, from the field. That's efficiency. And um, I think that's something that he can bring to the table for us. Absolutely, he can do that. Um, well, Pac, but I want to talk about his role pretty quickly. But let's look at that, that three-point shooting first. You know, you, you mentioned there, like, obviously there's some stuff we'd like to see him grow in. It's very similar to what Armando has done from outside. You know, just five, six, seven attempts um, in, in the career, no makes. But Okonkwo, as we watched what he did with um, England at the FIBA U19 Euro Championships this summer, was attempting at least one three-pointer a game. He made a couple. I mean, it, is that something you think he might be able to do? Or do you think that's just like England's doing that in the summer? 
we ain't going to see him pulling the trigger for Carolina from deep unless it's like end of shot clock situation. I tend to think that I think it'll be um, in the shot clock or maybe he's just wide open on an island and he gets tricked into shooting one. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I shouldn't maybe say it like that. But, <laughs> no, you know, it's like it's like you're in a game of pickup and it's like, go ahead. I'm back. Right. You, you take it, man. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, with the pieces we have, you know, that would be a win for our opponent. Yeah, we'll yeah. let him shoot that. That's better than Cormac or RJ or Harrison shooting it, you know. So um, I think we probably won't see much three-point shooting uh, from Oconquo. And if we do get any and they're good shots, then that's a bonus. Um, but I look at it like, you know, Hubert's made it pretty clear, at least I think he has, that he does want one true back-to-the-basket post player. And you mentioned his numbers are, you know, fairly similar to what Armando's done and I kind of look for him to fill that backup role to Armando so I don't I don't foresee him just firing it up from the perimeter a lot and I to be honest with you I don't foresee even a lot of mid-range from him I I foresee a lot of his stuff being uh, putbacks around the rim uh, lobs yeah just which clean clean up and back to the basket post moves is kind of what I see for him and there, there is a, a young man running the show, in all likelihood, that will be able to get those lobs to him at just the right spot, as as we hope and expect to see. Peck, you, you talked about it, so let, let's look at it. We, as we think about Conquo's role this year for the team, the, the big thing we had been talking about for a long time prior to him becoming a Tar Heel was gotta have more depth in the front court. Not necessarily somebody we expect to see a ton of time, but you just need the insurance policy back there. Do you believe, as we look at this now a couple weeks past that commitment, that Coach Hubert Davis was able to go out and get that type of guy? Is that what a Conquo can be uh, in his role for the Tar Heels this season? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Um, It gives us a much-needed boost depth-wise. And, you know, if nothing else – at the very least, it creates competitive competition in practice. So we know if he gets beat out for for that backup role, that somebody else had to beat him out and yeah. play better than him. Or and, differently, you know, like in, in an area of need, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, depending on how you look at it, that could still be a positive. Uh, but I think he's going to fill a significant role as that uh, backup for us and – Man, he brings some stuff to the table that that we kind of need that we haven't really had, you know, with his length and shot blocking ability and the way he can alter shots at the rim, his athleticism to run the floor. Uh, he, he does some good things in the way that he plays that we can take from his time at West Virginia and time watching him this summer. And I think it's a good get for us. You, you posed this kind of alluding to it just a second ago, but – you know, fighting for those backup minutes unless he gets beat out. Well, I I think it's safe for, I think we both kind of assume that it's between he and Jalen for like first man to play the five off the bench. Would you agree with me there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so if, if we were estimating it right now and I maybe should have saved this for our over under, but it's fun to talk about it right now. As of today, mid early to mid August, who do you think will play more? I'm trying to decide if I want to say total minutes or average minutes per game between James Aconquo and Jalen Washington. I'm going to go average minutes per game. Who do you think will win that between those two guys? Um, I think Oconquo. Um, just when I look at this team uh, and what I think, where I think we're projecting. I think, you know, we're going to be a little bit smaller than traditional Carolina teams, one through four. And not that Oconquo is just so much bigger than Washington. He's got more experience. He's super athletic. He alters alters shots defensively like we talked about, but he can rebound really well. He has a strong knack for that uh, offensively and defensively. That's something I think we need. Uh, he's used to that physical play. He's used to being a banger. He can run the floor really well. I mean, if he's tough enough to play for Huggins, 
I would think he's tough enough to play for us. I would and, say so. uh, And that's something that he, you know, that we need that he brings. And because of that, I tend to think he's going to play um, more average minutes per game than Washington. Okay. I'm going to go with Jalen Washington. It's interesting you said uh, that Aconquo has more chance, and that's true at the collegiate level. Uh, but I would probably think with James Aconquo being a latecomer to the game of basketball that Washington, even despite his injuries, might have more basketball experience in totality than James Aconquo does. And I think also because of him bringing a different nuance of what his skill set is versus Aconquo, I think there will be more opportunity as Carolina gives different looks to teams. And so I'm actually going to go with Washington for my answer for more minutes per game. And I kind of like that we're both coming down on different sides of that because it shows some of Carolina's depth and versatility that, that they have on the roster. And so I actually think it's a good thing that we feel differently about that. If that, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I and that's kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier is, you know, if Washington beats him out, then that means those two battled it out and they made each other better. And yeah. that's what we want. Competitive depth that, you know, creates competition and growth and practice. Love it. Spot on. Well, where we want to go next is talking about what are some of these specific strengths that make a Conquo stand out and will get him on the court for some of those minutes. Where are the areas in which he might be a little bit deficient still and needs to grow his game? Plus, what would make for a uh, successful season for James Aconquo in his first year at Carolina? We're going to touch on all of that in just a second. Hey, but first, this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Hey, listen, let's not beat around the bush here. Bird dog shorts and pants make you look and feel good. I recently got my first pair of bird dog's pants. I already had several pairs of shorts. And listen, Pac, you got to get some of these, man. It's so comfortable. Uh, legitimately, insanely comfortable. I'm just like walking around in my house in them in the dead middle of summer because they felt so good. Even like they're cool in the middle of the dead heat of summer. Bird Dogs, their khaki stretch shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the leg and thigh, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of like stiff, restricting cotton. How do they do that? Bird Dogs fix that issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so that you can get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs also uses anti-stink, sweat-wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So if you want to check out all this, go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnCollege or enter promo code LockedOnCollege for a free white Bird Dogs hat with your order. Again, that's birddogs.com slash LockedOnCollege or promo code LockedOnCollege for a free white Bird Dogs hat. You won't want to take off your Bird Dogs. We promise you that. Folks, make sure you are getting in your listener questions or uh, through video or just sending in text. You can do that at LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. 10 to 15 seconds if you're sending in a video. Just let us know your name, where you're from, and your question. We're going to be doing a mailbag episode next week and would love to include you on that. All right, Pac. Let's get to talking about what James Aconquo does that really kind of helps him stand out or be a unique basketball player despite being someone who's not been playing the game all that terribly long what do you think it is if you had to uh bring it down to one thing that will really get him on the court this season oh man narrowing it down to one thing is tough but i'm going to go with um just his ability to guard uh multiple positions Mm. uh i think an area where we will need to see improvement, where we have to see improvement, is on the defensive end. And I think I just think he brings that. Yeah. And I think that will help set him apart and get him on the court. Hmm. What yeah. Do you think? Yeah. I, I'm going to go – like, I keep thinking about the possibilities of what he does, similar to Norchad O'Meara from Miami, um, as a guy who – can like when you look at like I remember as Carolina was about to play Miami last year I thought oh this dude Mondo has several inches on him we're gonna dominate 
But Omir just comes out and holds his ground, gobbles up rebounds. And I know Oconquo didn't have much of an opportunity for that at West Virginia. Uh, but I, I think it could be there, at least in part, at North Carolina. And so I could see him really just being an, an undervalued or overlooked, perhaps, um, player who can do things that the opposition might not expect, especially with him being lower on the scouting chart when they're having to worry about Mondo and RJ and everybody. I think there's some of that that he could bring to the table. Yeah, and, you know, that's a good point. Like, um, in the last few years – or maybe, maybe not last few years, but last year, I thought we were missing guys like that. Just hmm. glue, glue guys, right? Like, they know their role. It doesn't have to be anything special. But they come out there. They work their tail off. They're wiry. Um, they clean up around the boards. You know, whatever it is, they take charges. They block shots. You know, he can do some of that stuff. Yeah. And I think he knows that. I don't think he came to Carolina to – take Armando's job. And, you know, I think he knows what he's getting into. We need glue guys. And I think he could really play a role like that for us. Yeah, man. I tell you, if he, if he got, uh, grew enough in his game to take Mondo's job, <laughs> we'd be in a good spot, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Well, pack let's, let's look at the other side of it and, and not, you know, we never, we do this all the time and it's never in a way to bash the player, but it's like in, in any of our jobs or roles or things we're doing in life, there's always room for growth. And so, you know, pack, if we were sitting down with James to say, brother, here's some things you can really still be working on to get more time on the court. Or if you were an opposing coach scouting against the Tar Heels and you're like, Oh, I'm going to do this to try to exploit James Oconquo's game. What would you do? Well, when I look at some of the weaknesses on Oconquo's game, it kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier. You can tell he's not um, he's not played the game for a very long time. There's a lot of parts to his game that are raw, uh, but his ceiling is really high. And so um, when I think of things he needs to work on, I think my mind sort of dr sort of drifts towards offense. Um, you know, he's he's kind of raw around the basket. And I would like to see just as simple as this, have a move, have a go-to move and a counter for it. Just have two solid moves around the basket, whether that's a, you know, turn baby hook over the front of the rim and then you mix it with an up and under or whatever that may be. But if he can develop that consistently, mm. you know, and then get another two to four points a game on cleaning up around the rim and running the rim and transition, that's a huge, that's a huge deal for us. Yeah. And so I think that's something he could work on. Um, and if I was an opposing coach, you know, as much as we ball screen, you know, you've got to try to ice those screens or play off of him and turn him into somebody that's going to catch the ball 15 plus feet from the basket and take tough shots. You know, it's kind of, kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, can, can defenses trick him into taking shots that we don't need to take? And yeah, and that, that, I think that's going to be key for Carolina as a team this year. You know, as we just think about some of the so shot selection, the lack of sharing from last year, uh, Carolina as a team is going to have to be vigilant to hunt for the best shot they can find on every single possession. And I think that just that mindset alone that you're talking about right there could be the difference in plus or minus five win. You know what I mean? Like, I, mm -hmm. I just think that's a massive deal for this year. Yeah. And so, James, don't get tricked <laughs> is the bottom line there. All right, Pac, let's let's imagine we're Hubert Davis sitting down at the end of the season talking to James Aconquo or just taking notes on the year. It's been a successful basketball season for James Aconquo in 2023-24, if what? I'm going to keep this one simple. And once again, it goes back to what we talked about. It's been successful for James. If we can look back and go, man, that was a glue guy for us. He really made a difference in the toughness. He made us better defensively. Mm. He helped the way we rebounded the ball. And it was never about him. It was just mm. he brought energy and effort and toughness and grit and glue to the team. So if we can look back and say that, then I think it's been a great year for him. Yeah, to both 
embr- to know and embrace his role and and play it well on the court. Uh, just you always talk about role definition and guys knowing their spot and their place, and and you just uh, expounded on that masterfully and beautifully. And I, I completely agree with what you just said there. Now, we want to go to probably what's our favorite part of every one of these episodes, talking about our comps, either uh, other Carolina guys or NBA guys, as well as some over-unders in terms of James Oconquo's stats this season. We're going to do that in just a second. But before we do, I need to tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is also brought to you by FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, we talked about it earlier, but when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time that team wins in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get a bonus bet for every victory. So, you know, I'm going to take the Chiefs because they're going to win a lot of football games with Mr. Patrick Mayholmes. So you can use those bonus bets on things like the spread, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets via America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Pac, let's get into our final segment. I always ask you if you've got a comp for me for the player we're talking about, either a current or former Tar Heel or a current or former NBA player. When it comes to James Aconquo and the little we know about his basketball career, because there just hasn't been much of one, who can you try to attribute what he's doing to? Yeah, my or, mind goes to not attribute to, excuse me. My mind goes back to former Tar Heel Desmond Hubert. Hmm. Um, Why so? I just think they have a similar build. Um, They have that like high ceiling, but their game is still kind of raw. And I do, you know, personally, I think Okonkwo projects higher than than Desmond did, but they remind me of each other in the way that they play. You know, it's that, that raw skill, but crazy athleticism shot blockers, potential for highlight dunks, um, the way they run the rim. You know, they just – they remind me a lot of each other. Interesting. Uh, But I do think Okonkwo, you know, can project better than him. But they they have a very similar game. It's also interesting to me because they're they're – I think Hubert might be like 6'10 to Okonkwo 6'9". But, man, James is a a bit beefier than Desmond. And so I like that. Like if they can have a similar skill set, but a Conquo can do it with a little more. Uh, you go. You go. Th- think twice about it when you come into the lane, if you'll allow me that. Uh, I like the Carolina's got several of those guys. Obviously, Baycott, Harrison Ingram's a thick dude, right? Like, and and I think mm-hmm. it's really important to have several of those on the wing and in the front court um, in particular. And so I, I'm excited about that reality. Pack. Over under time, my friend. First off, a non-statistical one. Over under 1.5 mentions a game that James Aconquo is not from America. Ooh. This is over the course of the whole season? No, just each game on the broadcast, over under 1.5 mentions that James Aconquo is a Brit. Mm, I'll take the over. You know, I feel like the announcers are really going to nail that one home. So, yeah, I'm taking the over. I think so, too. Give it to me. The only way you don't get it is uh, if there's games where he's not getting much playing time. But I think over the course of the season, we definitely get the over on that. All right, let's go to actual stats with it now. Over under eight minutes a game. Give me the over. Give me the over there. You know, I think – I think somewhere from 10 to 12 minutes is is where I see him play. Yep. And had uh, just going back to last year at West Virginia, played 10.9 minutes per game there. And so, yeah, I, I would expect the over as well. Not much higher than it, which is why I set the over-unders where I do. But, yeah, I expect him to be in that low double digits, 11 to 12. Speaking of which – you know how I've been talking about we need to make like a, a spreadsheet where we actually break down those 200 minutes? Our guy, yes. excuse me, our guy Jonathan Fox uh, did that. He went out and created it, like broke it down by all this stuff. Great stuff. We're going to have to look at it 
on an episode sometime coming up, uh, either uh, late this summer or early in the fall. But shouts out, shout out to you, JC Fox, for bringing that home to us. All right, Pat, over under five rebounds per game. And as a reminder, James averaged three per game last year at West Virginia. I'm going to take the under here. Okay. Um, and it's not because I don't think he's not a good rebounder. Um, I think he's he's an exceptional rebounder. I just – in 10 to 12 minutes to get over five rebounds would be pretty impressive. So I'm going to take the under, but I do think it's going to be like that four, four and a half mark. What about yeah. you? I'm, I'm going to say slightly the over – uh, which means I'm going to be on the high side of that minutes projection, you know, may, maybe cl- inching closer to 13. But I, I just have this like, you know, like when in the Hubert Davis system, when Mondo's in there, it's Mondo. That's why he's racking him up the way he is. I think a Conquo might have a little more help alongside him, but I think Carolina will rely on him to get gobble up rebounds when he's in there and so i think over the course of the season he'll do enough to just be on the high side of that five rebounds same number for points i'm going to set the over under for points at five per game last year he was at exactly half of that at west virginia two and a half um i'm still going to take the under here uh i think once again you know back to the rebounds like four four and a half i think the same thing for points so um, I'm expecting him to be somewhere between four and five points a game and four and five rebounds per game. And I think if he gives us that, I think that'd be huge. So, uh, um, yeah, I would take four and four out of him and be very pleased with that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So what about you? Are you taking over or under there? No, I'm going to take the under on this one as well, but same as you just slight, like I think he will be in the fours, like, you know, maybe four and a half ish or so. Um, I think there will certainly, I think he will get to double digits more than he did at West. Like, I think he only hit double digits once at West Virginia last year. I think we might see that happen a couple times this year as, you know, there are these games where Armando gets banged up a little bit or um, gets into some early foul trouble in the first half. And I think in those moments, like I I think about the the Virginia game last year, isn't a good example of that when Jalen Washington came in and and had a game for himself. Like I could see a Conquo being the beneficiary of that a couple times. Although Washington, you know, is a a hindrance in the way of that as well. But um, I'm going to take the under on the average, but expect him to get to double digits a couple times in points this season. Pack, I'm excited to have this young man as part of the roster. Excited to see his growth and development. Hopefully, he'll stick around for two years. He's got these two years of eligibility. No COVID eligibility for a Conquo, um, but is a young man who not only is young in terms of basketball career, but just young as a human. <laughs> and uh, so I, I just think there's a lot of really great, great growth opportunity playing against Armando every day, learning from Sean May, all of that kind of stuff, I think is going to add up to a nice little career for him in Chapel Hill. All right, next week, we're going to be talking about the man coming over from Louisville, Mr. Jalen Withers, not to be confused with the other Jalen W., Boy, that's going to be tough all year long. Pack, we're going to have to sort through that just like Coach Davis has been talking about. Friends, we want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listener watch every single day. You everydayers really appreciate you joining in with us as always. If you're a guest or a first timer on the show, man, so glad that you were here tuning in. Make sure you come back again tomorrow. You can follow the show on Twitter, Locked on Heels or Pack at Coach underscore K23, myself at Isaac Shade. You can email the show, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Subscribe to us on audio and video formats. Smash the like button to let us know you're here. Leave comments on your thoughts on uh, what we said about Mr. Conquo and if you agree or think we're idiots. Either way, we want to know. Hey, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Be right back with you tomorrow. But until then, peace. Peace.